Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to update my Wacom provisioning scripts to the latest version of Kubernetes. So if I show you my Kubernetes repository, so that's just me and open source Kubernetes repository. And we have the Wacom provisioning uh, directory here. And I know a few of you are using uh, my repository and the Wacom provisioning scripts to spin up a temporary Kubernetes cluster for, for testing or just to get some hands-on experience and things like that. And I haven't updated this in a while. So the Wacom provisioning scripts that I'm using, that's in my current master branch. Um, if you use that, you will get a Kubernetes cluster with version 1.26. And 1.26 is a bit old now, and we are now at 1.29, which is the latest version. So I've decided to upgrade my Vagrant provisioning scripts to use the latest version of Kubernetes cluster, which is 1.29. Mm -hmm. And I will show you um, what changes have gone into this uh, particular version of my Vagrant provisioning scripts. Not the actual Kubernetes 1.29 changes, but the changes in my Vagrant provisioning scripts. Okay, so I'm on my Mac now. I have logged into SSH into the Linux host, which is where I'm going to provision this cluster, the Kubernetes cluster. So I've got a separate branch. So if I show you uh, the branches, so I have currently the upgrade underscore version branch, and we will discuss what changes I've done uh, to the background provisioning scripts in this branch. But meanwhile, I'm going to check out this branch in my Linux workstation. And I'm going to spin up the cluster with this new version so that we uh, verify the new version of the cluster. We do some quick testing, like spin up an Nginx container, expose it, and see if we can access some basic testing to make sure version 1.29 works fine. I'm not doing an extensive testing here. It's just bringing up a container and make sure it's running, just to make sure the container runtime uh, version is working fine and things like that. Okay, so I am SSH into my Linux workstation where I'm running Ubuntu 2204 and this is where I'm going to be creating the uh, the Linux virtual machines for the Kubernetes cluster using Vagrant script. So the first thing I'm going to do is, so where am I? So I'm in my home directory, inside the repos directory. And I'm going to git clone the Kubernetes repository and specifically the upgrade version branch. So git clone kubernetes upgrade version and cd to kubernetes and in here we have the vagrant provisioning scripts cd to vagrant provisioning and we have our usual bootstrap scripts and the vagrant file all right so let's bring up the cluster let's start bringing up the cluster and while the cluster is coming up we will discuss what changes have gone into uh, this particular branch right so i'm going to do vagrant up Minus minus provider or libvirt. So I prefer using Linux virtualization, kernel based virtualization um, with libvirt instead of going for VirtualBox. But you might be using a Windows machine or a Mac where um, you might be using VirtualBox. So in which case, you just do Vagrant up without this minus minus provider flag. But for me, because I'm using a Linux workstation, for me, libvirt works better in terms of resource usage. Um, you will see how long it takes to spin up three virtual machines, set up Kubernetes cluster and everything. I'll show you at the end how long it took versus how long it will take from my experience if I use VirtualBox on my uh, Linux workstation. All right, so let's do that Vagrant app provider libvirt. So it's going to bring up all these uh, three virtual machines. So for those of you who have not used to my Vagrant script, so this Vagrant script will provision one master node and two worker nodes all of those will be on an Ubuntu 2204 virtual machines, right? Okay, let's go back to our repository and then look into the pull request. So I've created a pull request from the branch upgrade version to the master branch, right? Let's see what has changed. Okay, the first one is the Vagrant file itself. So I haven't made any changes to the Vagrant file. Um, it's just some tidying up the extra white space there. So it can ignore that. And when it comes to the bootstrap script, there are a few changes that I did. So you can see in lots of various places, I've removed the output error redirection. You know, I've had complaints from people saying the script is not working. I don't know what to do and things like that. So I just want to keep the thing, uh, keep the output tidy so that um, I added this output and error redirection. But I've removed that now. I've just 
um, redirected the standard output but I've removed the standard error redirection because if the script fails for some reason we want to know why it actually failed right but in my case what I usually do is I'll leave it uh, with the standard error redirection because I want the output very clean and if it didn't work then I'll come and update the bootstrap script remove all the output redirection and then run the script again uh, but I don't want my viewers to do to go through this pain so I've removed the out standard error redirection so you know when the script fails you know why it actually failed so that's one thing and the other important update um, for Kubernetes version 1.29 is the way you add the repository to Ubuntu and how you install it so on the left here, the way we add it is, so that's the repository URL, sorry, that's the GPG key, and the repository URL is here, apt.kubernetes.io, and you install whichever version was available um, in that repository. So you can specify which exact version you want from that repository, but going forward with the recent versions of Kubernetes, you see the... Uh, package repository, the uh, repository URL has changed and it has version in that URL. So there are specific URL for the specific version of Kubernetes that you want to install. And down here, if you see the install command, I'm not specifying the version. Previously, I used to specify, I used to fix my version to the, the first version, first minor version of the uh, Kubernetes release. But now I've removed that, I'm just installing kubeadium, kubelet, kubectl. What this will do is whatever the latest version of the package available in this repository, it will fetch that. So when it comes to, when the time comes to for me to update to the next version, say version 1.30, I will come and update this bootstrap script to change the URL here. So I can't just update the version because that's what I used to do previously, just one repository and then you keep updating the version that you want but going forward you just keep this line same and you're going to update the uh, the package URL okay and on the left you can see here now it's doing the kworker 2 I think it would complete before we uh, go through the changes yep it's already completed right the next uh, script that we are looking at is the bootstrap kmaster so the master node the control plane so this is the script that runs on the control plane what I've removed again I've removed the standard error redirection and you can see here the biggest change here is the project calico so I used to use the version 3.18 now I've moved to 3.27 which is the latest version by using this you will see a lot more custom resource definitions being deployed a lot of resources uh, deployed and now we are deploying two manifests and things like that but it's always good to use the latest version right and the thing is with kubernetes version 1.29 you won't be able to use this version of calico version 3.18 which is what i tried my intention was just to update the kubernetes version without touching any other bits of the script but having kubernetes version at 1.29 the initialization phase failed with calico 3.18 because of some api version changes and things like that so i had to test uh, the latest version which is working fine the kubernetes initialization might take a few extra seconds because it deploys some additional manifest but in the end it's all fine and finally the bootstrap script for the worker nodes so what has changed not a lot i've added the debian front end equals non-interactive and i've changed from using apt to apt get uh, because if you're using the script because we're using this in the command line we don't want the front end part of it and if you use apt you will get some warnings previously the warnings were hidden because i used the standard error redirection and now when i remove the standard error redirection and i used apt i had lots of warnings and i had to use the debian front end equal to non-interactive flag in order to suppress all those warnings and use apt get instead of apt Cool, so that's about the changes. The biggest change you need to remember is uh, Calico version from 3.18 to 3.27 and the Kubernetes version from 1.26 to 1.29. All right, All right, let's do Vagrant status. As expected, we have all three machines running. Uh, I was expecting to show you the time it took 
Okay, when I was testing, um, it took about three minutes, a little over three minutes to provision this Kubernetes cluster, spin up the VMs, provision the Kubernetes cluster using libvirt. But the, if, if I were to do the same thing using VirtualBox, it would have taken me over five minutes, close to six minutes or so. Right. The first thing to do now is um, I need to copy the Kubernetes configuration file. So let's create a directory dot cube under my home directory. So this is on the Linux workstation that I have SSH'd into. And now I'm going to copy the Kubernetes configuration file from the control plane, from the master node into the, the Linux workstation. So I'm going to use the SCP command. And this is the file that we are going to copy, etc kubernetes admin.conf. And we are going to copy that to our local Linux workstation under dot cube, which is the directory we just created as the file config. And 172.16.1600 is the IP address of the master node, and we are logging in as root user. Right, and the password is cube admin, and you can find the password in the bootstrap scripts if you don't know. Right, now I'm going to do kubectl cluster info, and I've got the alias setup. So k is cube uh, ctl alias. Actually, k is not kubectl. K is cube color, which is a, a wrapper script that gives you some nice colorized output for all the kubectl outputs. Right, kubectl cluster info. There we go. So that's our cluster, kubectl get nodes. So all the nodes are ready one master, two worker, and they're all running 1.29.1. kubectl get parts dash A to show the parts on all the namespaces dash o white so we get some extra information about the uh, nodes where they are running so i can see here everything is ready no restarts all of them are running so it looks clean and as you can see here there are a couple of uh, namespaces for calico calico system and a bunch of deployments and daemon sets Right, so if you've used the, the previous version of the Calico 3.18, you wouldn't have seen these many uh, deployments and uh, daemon sets and th things. And we also have the Tiger operator, which is also linked to the, the Calico deployment. Right, let's do our first testing. So kubectl deploy, kubectl create deploy nginx, minus minus image nginx kubectl get all so our container is getting created container creating uh, there we go our container is running so now we can expose our deployment so it creates a service so we can access it so I'm not going to use a load balancer or anything because I don't have load balancing solution installed in my cluster if you want load balancing solution on bare metal kubernetes like what we are doing right now I've done a lot of videos on Metal LB, which I'm not going to do in this video. I'm going to use node port, kubectl expose deploy nginx as type node port, and the port that we want to expose is port 80. Right, kubectl get all. So now we have the pod, we have the deployment replica set, and the service, and this is our node port. So I'm going to copy that, and we're going to use curl to curl to access the node port on the master node master node is 172.16.1600 and the node port is 32.468 and then we have our welcome to nginx welcome page so which is working fine just for completeness sake i'm also going to try this via our worker nodes which should work so node port concept is like you just expose the node port and whichever node you go through you will get to the deployment and to the pod eventually. So if I change that to one, which is kmaster1, we have welcome to nginx page, that's fine. And 102, again, it works fine. Right, let's clear up everything. kubectl delete deploy service nginx. All gone, and I'm also going to destroy my Kubernetes cluster, Vagrant environment, all the VMs, if I do Vagrant status now. Cool, everything is gone. I think that's it for this video. So 
By the time you watch this video, I would have already merged this uh, PR into the master branch. So make sure to pull the latest from the master branch so that you get version 1.29. As you've seen here, I haven't done any extensive testing. So I'm going to rely on you guys to let me know if there are any problems with either the latest version of Kubernetes or the latest version of Calico um, pod networking or the container D that we are installing here for the container runtime has also been upgraded to some of the latest version. I don't know what version, but I haven't specified um, any version, so it must have been the latest version. So if I go to Bootstrap, you can see the container D, where is it? Kubernetes repo, container D, uh, Yes, container D. So I'm installing app get install container D.io. So I'm not specifying any specific version. So whatever the Kubernetes repository, global repository has for the latest version, it will be installed. So I'm going to rely on you guys to let me know if there are any problems with any of these things. So that concludes this video and I will see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.